I am Malin Bornsang, the CEO of Rekan, and I'm here to present the progress that we are making within the field of uh, pancreatic cancer diagnostics. 500,000 patients are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer annually, and almost as many die from the disease. The prognosis at the time of diagnosis is very poor. Less than 10% in US and Europe survive more than, more than five years. Early diagnosis is crucial for survival, but early symptoms are not conclusive and most patients are diagnosed when it is already too late for a section and for, for curative treatment. And this is something that's not been changing over the past many, many years. There are well-defined risk groups, but no efficient means of screening. So the are imaging technologies that are labor-intensive and expensive and not suitable for testing at scale. Blood samples are suitable for testing at scale, but CA99 is about as old as I am, and it's missing up to 15% of the actual cancer cases. New technologies based on DNA are even worse, missing even more of the patients that need a diagnosis. So this is a clear unmet need, and it's also clearly stated in the national guidelines for pancreatic cancer. As an example, the patient group that has a defined hereditary or genetically increased risk of developing pancreatic cancer, they are supposed, according to national guidelines all over the Western world, except for Spain for some reason, supposed to be followed up several times per year. But the very same guidelines are also stating that efficient means of follow-up is lacking. New onset diabetes at an age above 50 is known to be connected with an increased risk of developing pancreatic cancer. That patient group is left without any follow-up at all because of the lack of an efficient testing. Based on only these three patient groups, the serviceable market in US and Europe alone is 4.3 billion euros. In general, there's a large potential in early diagnosis of cancer, naturally. And this, this has uh, led to vast investments. And the investments are showing progress for most cancer forms, but pancreatic cancer is not one of them though it is becoming the second most common cause of cancer-related deaths. So all of these uh, multi-cancer uh, detection tests are going to have to be accompanied with a different test for pancreatic cancer if they want to state general early detection capabilities. We are in the final stages of developing such a test. We are working with five patented biomarkers specific to pancreatic cancer. And we are making sure that our solution fits to current procedures, current clinical, clinical procedures. And they are being developed to, to be run on already installed base of analyzers. The ones that are closest to us right now are here in Lund. There's installed base in Malmö and Copenhagen. It's quite a common analyzer. Thanks to COVID, we all know that there's no such thing as a test that will never ever give a false positive answer and never ever miss a patient. If there were such tests, that would have an area under curve of one. Our test comes close. We have in repeated testing when we look at comparing pancreatic cancer patients with healthy blood donors, uh, reach an area under curve of 98.4 to 99.6. So it is fairly good. And as soon as we've finalized the development of our test, we are going to put our test to the test 
by an analyzing a large population of already biobanked and collected samples to try all of these different relevant indications. That data is going to be used for finalization of our technical files. And then from then on, we are looking into prospective studies. How is our test performing in a real clinical setting? And then the launch, of course, into the areas where we have been granted regulatory approval. A very, very important step in launching this product is to get acceptance into the guidelines. We have seen, looking historically, in the changes that have been made to pancreatic cancer guidelines, that inclusion into one guideline, inclusion into one guideline for one indication, has made possible a wider implementation, both when it comes to geography as well as indication-wise. We are, through our founders, very well connected with the specialists in the field, the oncologists and the surgeons. And we are well connected all over the world, specifically so in the Nordic region. And that is why we are planning on starting out with the Nordic region. There are 20 specialist hubs in the Nordic region. And we are, through our founders, connected with all of them. And some of them are going to be part of our prospective studies that we are planning right now. And uh, in the work of getting the guidelines updated, because it is these professionals that are responsible for the update of the guidelines. The third step of our, in, our launch in uh, the Nordic market, then we are moving outside of these specialist hubs, uh, targeting a larger uh, population of specialists that are getting, getting into contact with pancreatic cancer uh, patients. And we are also broadening the indications. So moving away from, from uh, only hereditary and early symptoms patients. That is heavily interlinked with our next generation projects. We are already now looking into the market, markets that we have in our test to see how well they can also predict the outcome for a pancreatic cancer patient. And we will, as soon as our test is finalized, look into more of treatment and predictions of treatment. That's also an area that really needs to be taken care of. We know for a fact that about a third of the patients who receive chemo today actually profit from it. So there's a lot of, of unnecessary cost and unnecessary suffering that we hope that our test is also going to be able to limit. We are also in the developed state of a lateral flow test that would be perfect to put at diabetic care centers for the diagnosis of uh, new onset diabetes patients. So to recap really fast, uh, we are almost done with the development of a test that is faster, cheaper, and more accurate to what is actually available on the market today. And we have a pipeline of new projects within the same clinical area. We are uh, raising 10 million Swedish kroners right now. A uh, large part of that has already been signed for. That is going to take us through the finalization of the development and the finalization of our clinical files. For the prognostic studies and also for the launch, we are going to raise and next year additional 20 uh, million Swedish kroners. Thank you. Uh, now I have 30 seconds remaining. I'm going to, to I have to talk to most about most important part of this. It's the team. Between us, we've got 50 years experience of surgery and research on pancreatic cancer. We have 150 years experience on uh, development, production, marketing, launch of life science products. And we are also supported by experts on market access within the very specific field of pancreatic cancer, as well as IP. 
all of us have a strong sense of urgency. We believe that our test is going to start saving lives the very first day it becomes available on the market. Thank you all for listening. I hope that I've been able to transfer some of that sense of urgency also to you. Thank you, Marla. So, you talked about pancreatic cancer here. How come that's the first cancer form that you're, you're yes, testing it in? Yes, very re relevant question. So, this was a, cancer, a pancreatic cancer project from the start. We are founded by surgeons that are uh, active in that field, and we are founded from their frustration of not being able to help their patients. Um, so they are following up on hereditary patients. Uh, there's no efficient means of screening, so there will be an imaging going through once a year. And that imaging is going to look fine every year until it doesn't, and then it's too late. So that's the foundation of the company. But it could be used for other types of cancer as well? Yeah. Uh, I don't predict that it will be a possible to use. It will be possible to use for uh, differentiation from other cancer forms, so it will be relevant for, for other cancer forms as well. Uh, but it's not going to be useful in other cancer forms. And that's also why we're focusing our next generation projects on an increased usage within pancreatic cancer, because that's where we have our, our expertise. So how does the competition look like within this area? Yes, uh, there's been a lot of money invested, both in general early diagnostics and in pancreatic cancer diagnostics. Uh, but so far with very little uh, success. Um, we, we were really hoping for one of our competitors to make it in the US, uh, because um, that would have been beneficial, we think, also for our solution. Uh, but currently we don't have, uh, we have general uh, early detection uh, companies, but they are not sensitive enough for pancreatic cancer. And currently there are other products in development, but nothing available. And we have not seen higher sensitivity in any other setting than what we seem to be able to provide from the data that we have gathered so far. You mentioned here that the development within the area has been quite slow, and again, you were talking here about it's difficult to get tests that are sensitive enough. Why is it so difficult? <laughs> Pancreatic cancer is a difficult cancer form. So it's progressing faster than most other cancer forms. It's metastatic faster than other cancer forms, so it needs to be found earlier. Uh, that's one of the issues. And then it's also... Um, uh, so that's why, for instance, uh, cell-free DNA isn't, isn't working very well. And then it, it's been more focused on more ca common cancer forms, where we've also seen a lot of success. And therefore, pancreatic cancer, but due to the aging population, and also to the success in treating other cancer forms, that's the reason why pancreatic cancer is now becoming the second most deadly form of cancer, predicted to be in a couple of years' time. And as a final question then, uh, we'll talk a bit about strategy. Why have you chosen the EU first and the US second and not the other way around? Yeah, super good question. Uh, so when we decided that on that strategy, we were hoping to be able to follow the strategy of being a fast follower. So that is something we are, uh, we are looking into that strategy. Uh, and secondly, we are, so, we are connected all over the world to our founders but we are exceptionally well connected within the Nordics. And we're really seeing that inclusion into one guideline is going to be beneficial uh, globally, and that is the reason. Thank you so much, Marlin. Thank you. <laughs>